All right, good morning, everybody. It is Ryan with ZenFX. It is our weekly Full Circle Scalping trade room. Welcome to everyone that's in the chat and to uh, anyone that's joining us after the fact on YouTube. All right, today we'll go through our normal markup of USD JPY as we usually do. We'll set a trade plan. Uh, we'll take a, a look at some external factors, what might play into the market today. And then we will uh, just look to execute that plan. As usual, Forex does carry risk, so please keep that in mind. These rooms are for educational purposes only. All right, let's get to the chart. So yesterday, uh, yesterday was a crazy day. We had a lot of consolidation and sideways movement. I mean, not as much as the other days in the past, but um, you know, we just had basically a big push up and then a big push down. Switch that, sorry, told you, lack of sleep today. So we had the big push down in the beginning of the Asian session all the way through about mid London. And then right about that time, we hit this reversal point, this pivot and started a new uptrend and then that uptrend just went all day almost until the very end of new york and then just at the last hour we had this drop here right until the end of the market day and then asian session began and we started to consolidate so from a psychological standpoint this right here can anybody tell me what that represents from a psychological standpoint, just wild shot in the dark. What, why do you think there was this sudden drop here in the market? And I mean, it's not like, it's not something that you can predict, but it's an, it's an after the fact analysis that when you see something like this, it's clearly representative of something. Uh, collect on, you know, um, collect on money, is possible but these movements here this isn't we don't have any institutional moves here this is all sideways this is retail traders and larger head funds hedge funds or well, smaller hedge funds really so we just see these moves are are smaller smaller groups moving the market smaller retail traders uh, you know are our hive mind basically but when you see a big drop like this right at the end of the day, right, the end of the day, what can that possibly represent? And it's, it's important to recognize these things. This represents profit taking. Okay. Okay. You just think about that, that we had this huge push down. We had this kind of uh, on the 15 minute, a little bit of a, a minor double bottom, you could call it. Price shot back up. And what, what were we doing as retail traders all day? We were looking for buy entries, okay? Buy here, buy here, buy here, buy here. This was a very, it was just a purely bullish day. So at the very end of the day, most people don't like to pay swap fees. Most people, especially when you hit this level, which was a perfect resistance level. I mean, it tapped it to the pip, formed a nice little evening star formation. Everybody said, end of the day, I'm getting out. This is everybody selling off their position, okay? So it's just a matter of when we analyze the market, we want to look at not only what is price doing, but what are traders doing. That's one of the main uh, concepts of Fibonacci is that that's an insight into traders' mindset. Traders are doing things in a very lo logical manner. And the, lo the logistics of this right here is day is over, the move is done or at least it's an, I, I have got enough of my profit in, let me lock it in, and there was just a huge sell-off. Also because there was a Bank of Japan interest rate decision that came out as well. It was, um, 
maybe it wasn't an interest rate decision, but they had, let's take a look real quick on my FX book. Which we also want to look at the economic calendar anyways, because uh, we just had, look at that. All that USD news, we just had the initial jobless claim come out. That's a very big thing, but very mild reaction. Okay, it came out hawkish, came out better than expected, but I don't see the dollar really bullying uh, UJ around very much, or you know, the yen. So kind of a non-event, but what we did have, uh, if I can scroll up, yeah, 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 yeah. There we go. We had this, this event right here. Okay, the current account released by the Bank of Japan. So when that happened, a lot of retail traders were selling off their position to get out of the way of high impact news because we had no idea if the yen was going to start shooting up, shooting down, no clue. The actual sentiment was that that was going to come out as hawkish and that the yen was just going to start driving price down in a crazy way. So not only do we see a sell off, we also see a possible short positions being taken in anticipation of that big announcement. You know, news traders, people that like to play the news for short, quick gains. Uh, and then what happened was we got that announcement and price just went nowhere. And it actually started to go up. Even though, uh, you know, the news came out as fairly dovish, to be honest, came out as negative for the yen. We saw this, this was the news event, and then price started to drop down. And people were thinking that, I bet there was probably a lot of confusion in the market because people were thinking if it comes out hawkish, I'm going to sell. I'm going to take a quick sell. News came out as dovish. People are like, oh, okay, well, now price is going to shoot up. And it continued to drop. It continued to drop for some reason, which, which I'm sure confused a lot of traders. And then at this point, I'm sure people either had their stops hit, had to get out of the market, or just decided that the news wasn't going to do what they thought it was going to do. And then, then price started to climb due to that dovish news. The dollar took precedence over the yen, it gained strength of the yen. And then that's why we've seen it climb all through the Asian and into London session. And now we're in this, this consolidation, this just sideways choppy, choppy market. So, so that's just a, you know, it's just a small look into the psychology when you when you're looking at and and this, I'll go more into this in like the psychology of trading when I do the Elliott Wave module, uh, and that's going to be a very in-depth module on how we look at price movements and price corrections. But when you look at the waves, the impulse psychological waves of the the impulse and the retracement waves of what would be a complete uh, like five wave Elliott cycle. You know, you have your initial burst, then you have your sell-off, then you have your, um, what's called your institutional leg, which is the largest part of that wave, which is the third leg, third leg. And that's when you see the largest movement in price. And then when you get up here, you have your institutional sell-off, which is your fourth wave. And then you have your fifth wave, which is the retail trader wave. And it's not as big as the institutional wave, but it's where price has been confirmed. Well, I'm sorry, the trend has been confirmed. And now retail traders are confident enough to jump in and catch the, the tail end of that trend and hope to ride it out until it finally hits that reversal peak of that fifth wave, that fifth movement, and then reverses to form the correction. Okay. So when we'll go all in depth into that um, in that Elliott Wave module. But what I'm trying to say is these pushes and pulls are, think of it not only as price not being able to break a certain point, but basically hedge funds and retail traders and on a larger scale institutions hitting a level where they're satisfied with their profits. 
and they start locking those in and sh shorting or not shorting but selling off or buying off their positions closing their their positions and when you have big hedge funds saying okay at this level I'm good and they close their positions you're gonna see a big reversal in price whether it be bullish or bearish depending on the trend and that's that's where you want to look for these retracements uh, this is where you want to look for your entry opportunities because they're only going to sell off so much before the trend continues. So uh, like a good measurement of Fibonacci is, uh, well, I want to do all that, but if it hits 50 to 61.8%, it's a true retracement. If it hits only 31.8%, look at that. We have a nice tap at the 70, which is our optimal trade entry if you're an ICT trader. Uh, this is a true retracement, but if we look at something that's a little more shallow, like 31.8, that is just a just a pullback, just a little bit of a it's a it's just a little bit of a retracement, and that's a excellent entry opportunity because it's confirmation that that trend is going to continue. Anyways, I digress. Um, let, let's, uh, let's set up our zones and let's take a look at what our trade plan is going to be for today. So I'm just going to extend out this, uh, this zone that was already here from yesterday. You can see price definitely reacted at that. Let's zoom out to our four hour so that we can set our, our good support level. Let me just use this. Sorry, resistance. We need to set a, a level of resistance for where price is at right now. There we go. Nice level. Okay, you see it. Perfect retest here and here with the wicks. Okay, so as we've said in the past, when we're talking about support and resistance levels, two touches is valid, three touches is confirmed. We use the body of the candle as our baseline. And then these wicks, like I said, we have second touch here. That's a valid support or resistance level. Third touch, it is a confirmed level. And I, I know there's varying schools of thought, but I tend to uh, stand more on the side of the more times that a line is touched or tested, the stronger it is, the stronger the support or the resistance. Some people say it's the opposite, but it's just going to depend on what you want to, uh, what you what you find in your own trading experience and what you uh, what you see happen in the market. But from my own experience, the more times a support or resistance level is tested, the stronger it is. The more likely it's going to see a rejection, or if it gets broken, it, the the larger, the more engulfing that the candle has to be for it to break. Something like this huge engulfing candle. Um, huge bearish engulfing and it broke through both these levels and it needed that to be able to break this level of uh not well not not so much this but this brick wall here that was there from the past from these this other level of price consolidation so let's drop down to the one hour and let's find our one hour level of support sorry resistance I don't know why I keep saying that today told you I'm I'm running off I'm running off coffee and and sleep deprivation trying to get these uh these modules out to you guys okay very nice I like that right there so we have this tap we have this can't these candle bodies to rest it upon and then we have these tests again so this is a good example of we have our one hour actually lower than our four hour resistance because you know there's there's two different scenarios and then two scenarios of those scenarios that can play out when you set your one hour and you drop down from the four hour to the one hour time frame your one hour support or resistance can either be above or below above or below your four hour and then not only can it be above or below, but it can be either with 10 pips or less or a good distance away, maybe 10 to 20 pips away. 
And that all that's going to determine how you draw your levels of supply and demand. When I have, when we zoom in, okay, because the one hour is below the four hour, obviously I'm not going to go off the wicks. I'm going to draw this zone in between these two levels and form what we call the brick wall. Okay. This is the brick wall. Oh, God dang it. MT4 just loves to try and tell me where it wants to put these lines. It makes me so aggravated sometimes. Uh, I, you know, I like MT4, but sometimes it just, it tries to, it tries to outthink you. We'll leave it there. So it forms this brick wall because price has to get through both these levels to be able to make it into, a, into an uptrend, to retest and then continue into a bullish trend. So right now it's stuck between these two levels. The other thing that, the other thing that we see sometimes is, and I'm just gonna use this as an example. Sometimes we'll set a, a level, like a one hour level, and then when we drop down into the 15, let's say we've dropped down into the 15, we get wicks or sometimes even a little bit of candle poking out above that. Okay. That's when we want to draw the supplier demand zone above. Like that. Okay. Especially if our four hour is like way down here. Okay, so I get that question a lot. Do I draw supply and demand zones? Do I draw it above the uh, above the level, below? God damn it, below the level. Jeez, um, you know, there's a lot of confusion on that sometimes, and that's that's the whole point. It's going to depend. First off, once you set your level and then you drop down to the lower time frame, is it above? or below price? Is it close to the four hour? And do you have actual candle bodies extending above or below that one hour level? Or do you just have wicks? Because what are you looking for? You're looking for either a barrier that price is gonna have to smash through to continue up with this trend, or you're going to be looking for like if we have a lot of, if this one hour was above and then above that there was uh, wicks and some candle bodies, instead of looking for this barrier for price to have to break, I'm looking for a depth of price for wicks to have to break or um, retest basically. I'm looking for where can I put my stop loss that wicks are going to maybe go up into but not go past? Because I'm looking for that, that sell. So I'm either look, oh, what, I don't know why I have pink. I, I must have been in a fabulous mood. Magenta. So if I'm looking for a depth of price that I want to keep my stop above, but I still am in an overall bearish analysis, a bearish, bearish bias, then I want to set this as kind of a stop hunt level, a, um, a cushion, right? But if, I'm, if I have this, like this brick wall, I'm using it in kind of the same way, but I'm looking still for price to reject off of this, but go no higher than this before I take an entry. This is after I take an entry. I just don't want to get stopped out. I want to see price hit this and then get rejected. And then I take an entry. And then, then this becomes my, my stop loss zone. I want to have my stop above it. But if I have this, like if I have my one hour right here, And the four hour, like this four hour here, and then the one hour is up here, and I see price come and can kind of consolidate in this zone and then start to drop down. Then I want to use this as my cushion 
to where I'll put my stop loss up here because price hasn't gone any higher than that, but it hasn't closed any higher than this support level. Okay, does that make sense? I'm looking for where does price close at before I enter, and then I'm looking for where has price, where is the high or the low been? Like if we look at an open high, low close, like a bar chart, this, we'll see this. We will see, you know, the, the open, the low, the high, and the close. This being the close, this being the open, this being the high, this being the low. I wanna see where's the high, where's price been? Because it could possibly go that far in the future. I just don't think it's gonna close that far up, but it could go high enough to stop me out, okay? Now, so let's take a look at what price is doing this morning. Uh, and the reason why I've been pontificating about this for so long, uh, in, instead of us setting a trade plan is because we really don't have much to trade off of today. We have this consolidation. We have this kind of this brick wall price peaked up above it and then just shot right back down. So even though we have this in go, this uh, small little spinning top up here, I'm all clustered today. Um, we have this, it's just kind of a false breakout. We can set that to the wayside. It doesn't, not really, not really relevant to us this morning. Kind of a, an anomaly, you could say. And sometimes we just have to kind of let those anomalies go. But for the most part, price has been held back by this brick wall. And USD News came out. We were unaffected. It had kind of this sharp little spike up, these two little spikes up, um, and then the yen is gaining momentum and we're seeing it carry price on down. So what are the two things that we could have taken? We could have taken this 50 breakout on down to this next zone. So let's talk about that. We were a little bit tardy to that party. So if we're using just our EMA methods. Now remember, when we use full circle scalping, we're using, we're bringing all of our tools to bear. And one of the tools that we have is our EMA strategy, which is if we see a breakout, a breakthrough of this 50 EMA, that's a trade in anticipation of this 14 coming down and crossing eventually. Then the 14 cross of this 50 is our, our second entry. But our aggressive entry is this be here, let me get my annotate out. It'd be easier than using the trend lines. So this candle right here is our breakthrough candle. It's our confirmation candle because it broke the 50 EMA, broke below. So then this candle is our entry. We would enter on this aggressively and look to take it to this zone. We would take 10. Two positions. First one, we go for 10. We exit at 10 pips. Second one, we let run down our runner to the bottom zone. Okay. Now, let's take a look at what we're getting on the AGMAT template. Because I told you guys I would start integrating that a little bit more into the trading that we're doing. So you can kind of see how I use it when I take trades as like a final confirmation. So if we look at what it's telling us, boop, 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 we see that we've got two good confirmations that that would have been a, a, an aggressive trade to take, uh, that you would have been safe, semi-safe on that. And I'll show you here what we're seeing. First thing I'm seeing is this, okay? The, the future prediction line is pointing down and it's not just kind of uh, like this. It's a nice downward slope. That's indication number one that we would have been good to take at least 10 pips out of the market. And we have our 200 EMA right here. That's a, a great take profit one target if you don't have your uh, see, 200. If you don't have your support and resistance levels 
Like if, if you're not a big fan of hyper scalping, if you don't, if you're not sure about your support resistance levels yet, if you don't have confidence in that, just taking this as an EMA trade, this would have told you, okay, that sounds, it looks like you're good to take it. And then our second confirmation, we look at Maxwell's equation. Look how far below this, uh, thank you. I forgot to turn alerts off. Look how far below the, the liquid 50 or the, the dynamic median line is here. So we have a lot of selling volume in the market right now. And you can see that we're dropping down fairly quickly. Take profit should have already been hit. Let's take a look, where are we at with that? If we would have entered here, okay, you would have been safe with a 10 pip take profit. Yeah, you would have been very safe. And we're right about, it hit a, it's right at about nine pips uh, so far that it's gone. So you wouldn't have hit take profit yet because uh, your spread definitely would have kept you from hitting that, but it looks like it's about to tap that fairly soon. And if we would have used the 200 EMA as a take profit two level, that's 12 pips. So you could have even either let it go all the way down to our zone here, or, and let me go ahead and throw that on there. Do, do, do. Moving averages are your friend. Let me go ahead and I'll make it violet. Okay. So this would have been a good take profit two level for your runner. Well, it wouldn't have been much of a runner, but I'm just saying if, if you want to be a little bit on the uh, conservative side, because the 200 is a very strong EMA. And a lot of times you're going to see price rejected off the 200. It's a very good tool just for using a gauge, basically for using as a take profit level if you're unsure about the direction of price especially if the 50 has not broken through the 200 yet. It's very easy to get rejection off of this, okay? So it looks like this, you already would have hit your, your 10 pip take profit, been closing in on that um, take profit two level fairly quickly, okay? So that's how I use the, um, the Adjumat. Very simple, but again, I can't stress it enough. And I don't know why on YouTube, like I, I put the, I put the uh, update on the Adjumat yesterday and I got like a, a dislike, like right off the bat. I was like, come on, man. I don't know what you expect. Did you expect me? I don't know what you're, what people are expecting out of those videos, but I'm just being honest when I say you don't use the Adjumat template on its own. It's not what you take your positions off of. You, you don't ever take a trade off of just an indicator. That's the whole reason why we do our markups with our support, our resistance, supply and demand, you know, why we add the EMAs for our, our confluence of confirmation. This is just, I've just found that this is just a really good final step because look at that. It's still dropping and we still see, you know, I know this is sideways, the equation line itself, but the fact that it's below the 50, it's kind of like the RSI. If it's below 50, you have selling pressure, you're probably in a downtrend. If it's above 50, you're probably in an uptrend. I mean, there's all, always exceptions to those rules, but as a, general, uh, as a general rule, that's why you use the strength index. RSI means relative strength index. You use the strength, and look, there we go, hit that 200. We're getting a yellow box, but the yellow box without a, a black arrow in it is basically meaningless. Uh, and this is where people get a little bit upset. Anyways, the strength index, you're measuring the strength of the market. It's like if you've ever used the ADX, okay, the, the average directional index indicator, that's just giving you an overall uh, meter as far as are you in a trend or not? Is, does the direction have a trend? Like if it's a 50, you know whether you're in an uptrend or a downtrend that that's a strong trend, okay? Most people don't know how to use that indicator. I'm actually... Uh, adding that into the basics module that should be coming out uh, probably that one will be probably tomorrow module six it covers all of the common indicators that people use no I'm sorry I think it's module 10 but I will cover how to use like the ADX the Bollinger Bands the the MACD all those ones that you guys should at least have a cursory knowledge of so anyways yeah we did hit this but um 
anyways, I, I, I lost my train of thought as, as far as how that's going. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. The, uh, so this, like these yellow boxes, this is what I get people kind of complaining about where they're saying, um, you know, that moves. Yeah, of course it moves. I, uh, yeah, I, I, that's what I'm trying to tell you. The reason why we use the, um, the binary options template is because the white arrows, once those print in conjunction with a black arrow, yellow box, that's when you're getting kind of the, the, the strong confirmation um, that, that that trend is, is valid, or at least it's valid in the short term. And that's why when I use this, I only like to use this on the 15 or the five minute because I just, it's very hard for this algorithm or any algorithm to compute what's going to happen beyond 15 or 30 minutes. I just want to know, can I get my 10 pips? That's all I want to know. Can I get my 10 pips? And that's all you guys should be concerned about. Get your 10 pips, your five to 10 to 15 if you're in something ridiculous like GJ. <laughs> no offense. Um, and then set your runner. Put your, put your stop loss to break even and go do the rest of your day. Of course, of course, Travis. Of course, Chad. Okay. So that's about it. And uh, so as we're going further into the day, that's playing out beautifully. That's playing out very, very beautifully. Going into the day now, I mean, we just, I mean, it's pretty straightforward. We want to see a rejection off of this level and maybe take it back up for a buy zone to zone. If not, then our trade plan is I want to see a strong breakout. That's your aggressive sell. I want to see a retest. That's your conservative entry. And then I want to see a confirmation candle print, and then that's your confirmed entry. Okay, if we get a bearish candle, if we get a, a bearish candle, a big engulfing one, nice maribozu to break through this brick wall, we get a good retest with a bullish, not, you know, a, a nice wick, maybe off of a shooting star, and then a, uh, a bearish candle to print after that. And of course, it doesn't always happen one, two, three. It could be over the course of six or seven candles. Then uh, I'll look to take it down to this next support level, which is representative of the previous day. Okay, you see we have this level from the other day. And this is the great thing about support and resistance is they return to these levels all the time. So as you draw these out, you'll keep going through your week and then price will sometimes return to those levels and that's a very very strong confirmation that you can either sell or buy off of those levels or use them as a, as a valid take profit level and trade them zone to zone all right okay guys that's really all i have for you this morning it's not going to be a, i don't want to make this an extra long trade room does anybody have any questions uh regarding anything that we've gone over this morning or about our trade plan Anything in general? Uh, anybody want me to read your horoscope for you? Uh, if you're Pisces, um, you will meet a, a mysterious stranger today who will offer you an interesting opportunity. I'm just kidding. I don't. I don't believe in astrology at all. Anyways, anybody? No. Okay. No questions. All right. Well, I'll wrap this up. Thank you for. Um, Oh, Virgo, you will find love and a soulmate. Yeah, so keep, keep your heart open for romantic possibilities. Okay, Mebs? <laughs> All right. Um, that's your trade plan. Remember, do your chart markups. First thing, stick to your trade plan. Plan your trade and trade your plan. I can't stress that enough. Do not deviate from your plan once you have it set in motion. If you do, you won't be able to go back and analyze your losses because you won't be able to analyze what part of your plan went wrong if you're just impulse trading or making decisions on the fly. The entire reason for making a trade plan is so that you take as few decisions out of the equation as possible and just run on autopilot, okay? Just run on autopilot. What, what's the pip count for what? I don't know. How many pips have you got this week? You, you tell me. 
we haven't if you're talking about the signals channel well all the signals have been published so you should be able to count that up on your own I don't know why you guys keep there's only been two signals that have gone out so it's not really a lot of addition that you have to do we did uh, there was one signal I can probably I think I can just do this off the top of my head I think there was one signal that we did in NZD that uh, we got stopped out uh, for 15 pips, real small loss. And then the UJ trade, uh, if you want, I know Mebs took profit early on that. So that one, uh, I know that some, some members pulled money off of that. I had suggested that you guys stay in that trade and let that ABCD pattern play out. But UJ has just been all over the map. So that, that one broke even. So, and the signals channel this week, I have had not really a lot of time to really get into that I, and as I told you it's gonna be slow growing as we go along my main focus this week has been to try and get these um, training modules out to you guys uh, and it always seems like whatever I don't work on is that you guys complain about I'm like okay well, I don't have time to put out signals but people are complaining about well where's the free stuff you know because nobody wants to pay for anything well where are the free modules okay well let me work on those I work on the free modules everybody's like oh well what about the EA oh okay well let me try and get that squared I only have so many hours in a day and I try and I still have to do my own trading and do these trade rooms for you guys so you know this like I said the signals I'm trying to put out as many as possible, but those will kind of pick up steam as the weeks go by. Um, as, and again, those are the whole month is free to everybody. So these are all free signals, but expect more. Expect more in the coming weeks. I'm definitely working on it. We only had two this week, and it was just kind of a, it was kind of a light week. I don't have anybody that's dedicated to that right now. So, but yeah, don't worry. Those, those will pick up. Those will pick up with time uh, right now. Wasn't a lot of opportunities in the in the pairs that I was uh, looking at, and I'm I'm not just going to throw random pairs out there to try and give you guys, uh, you know, m something to trade. Like say, if I don't see a valid setup, I'm not going to put it out there. You know? and but that's the difference between me and other signal callers right now. I'm not going to throw five pairs out there and hope one hits a home run uh, just so I can say I got you guys 200 pips for the week which I see a lot of signal callers do. I'm more of the mindset that I'll give you one or two just really, really nice trades with sniper-like entries. You notice that one that we took a loss on, 15 pips. Who, what, that's nothing. You know, 15 pips. And then the other one, uh, we took no loss at all. It was a very high, and it's still a high-quality trade, in my opinion, that just the entry didn't play out. Uh, but we took no loss. And if it would have played out, we would have caught a minimum of 100 pips. And I know some members caught 50, but I'm not going to point to that and say, oh, yeah, we caught 50 pips this week. I'm not going to, you know, I don't want to be disingenuous. I want to be completely transparent with you guys. Only high quality setups. And you notice the setups that I sent you, you might not have caught pips, but you should have gotten a nice little master class on how I look for entries and how you guys should be doing markups. So what we didn't get in pips, you know, you guys got in, in markup knowledge. I would... I would think that's a fair trade-off. And again, there are going to be 11 modules being dropped for free for you guys on just basic uh, trading 101. And then next week, the advanced price action course is going to be coming out. And I think you guys are really going to love that. I know I do need employees, but until we can get people to pay for stuff, wink, because everybody wants it free for some reason. As soon as we can start getting some actual paid subscribers going, I can afford to um, bring on some employees. So it's a, it, I'm growing the company as best as possible, but I do foresee it happening very, very soon. Um, as soon as we can get a little more, you know, some memberships going, a little more uh, community involvement, I've got some traders in mind to, to bring on. I just have to figure out a way to pay them. And uh, yeah, I think, it, I think it'll be good. It's like a catch-22. I want to bring on guy. I want to pay guys to give out quality signals for you guys, but I can't pay guys until you guys are paying for quality signals. But you guys don't want to pay for quality signals until there are actually quality signals to pay for. And so it's a. You see where? See how we're just spinning our wheels there? So, anyways, I'll try and get you guys some pips in the meantime by letting you piggyback off my trade analysis. Um, and like I said, 
I only look for very, very high quality setups. So there may only be two or three trades a week, but those trades are very, very good, very good risk to reward ratios and very, very well thought out trades. And then, like I said, I send you guys the complete markups of those. So even if the trades don't play out, at least you can kind of see how the setups happen and apply those principles to your own trades. Yeah. <laughs> I know, right? I, you guys don't want to hear my complaining. I, I totally, my job is to listen to your complaints. It's like when I was in the military, okay? Complaints go up the chain. They don't go, they don't go down the chain. Like I don't complain to you guys. I, I just, I get complaints and then I pass those up to whoever is above me, which currently is no one. So I am the end of the line for the complaints department. They don't, they don't go downhill. Yeah. <laughs> uh, right. Zen, uh, yeah. Zen, Cor Zen Corp, Corp LLC. Yeah. It's just going to be like evil Corp only, only greater. Yeah. Oh, that's so sweet of you. So sweet of you. Um, yeah, I know. It's this. We're gonna be. We're all turtle traders. I'm the. I'm the big papa turtle. You guys just jump on my back. And we'll all uh, cross the pip finish line together. So does anybody, does anybody know the uh, story of the the turtles, the turtles that are holding up the earth, right? Real quick before I end, this is one of my favorite stories of all time. So a very predominant astrophysicist was giving a lecture to uh, a college. Uh, classroom, you know, packed house. It was giving a, a lecture on just basic astrophysics of how the earth is round. We're spinning, you know, uh, 24,000 miles an hour, obviously to complete an, an entire rotation every 24 hours. Oh, sorry, a thousand miles an hour. And then we're hurtling through the space going around the sun and, uh, you know, the, uh, all of that. And an uh, old lady in the very back stands up and says, you're wrong. And so, you know, seeing that it's, you know, just a, an, a frail old woman, you know, he doesn't want to be completely cruel and uh, just, you know, shut her down. So he invites her up to the front and he says, please, my dear, please explain to me why it is that you think I'm wrong. And every, she says, without missing a beat, she says, well, everybody knows that the earth is resting on the back of a, of a giant turtle silence like dead silence in the room everybody's like what is this crazy lady talking about and so the uh the professor says okay okay thinking he's got her intellectually in intellectual checkmate he's like oh okay well if there's a turtle holding up the earth then what's holding up the turtle and the old lady without missing a beat as well says everybody knows son it's turtles all the way down <laughs> And if you ever look, Google that picture, there's a, there's a famous picture of uh, a turtle on top of a turtle and just turtles all the way down holding up the world. Uh, I just, I don't know why I just find that, that story hilarious. And it's, it's the, it's one of the reasons, uh, I think that's where they got the name for the book, The Turtle Traders. I could be wrong. I, I usually am, but anyways. All right, guys, I'll let you go. Thanks for hanging out with me this morning. I really appreciate you guys showing up. I do. I love giving these uh, webinars for you guys. We will uh, see how this plays out later today. We're starting to get kind of a rejection off the 200 already. So trade your plan, plan your trade, other way around, obviously. But uh, you know the deal. All right, guys, I've been Ryan with ZenFX. Thanks for joining me this morning. If you uh, are joining us after the fact on YouTube, Please give us a like unless you're that one lonely soul who has been giving me dislikes for, <laughs> for the past week. I don't know who I upset, but, um, you know, oh, I'm, I deeply apologize if I've offended your delicate sensibilities. Uh, like I say, give us a like or subscribe. Join our Facebook group. We have a great group of traders, um, and all we want to do is just help you get better at trading. Um, we've got tons of free resources and please keep an eye out for all the free price action courses that are coming out this week, 11 modules for free. Uh, they're just going to go over the basics of trading Forex 101, supply, demand, uh, Fibonacci, just, just letting you, giving you an introduction into Forex, things you should definitely know if you don't, and then look for our advanced price action course coming out next week, and that one's going to be amazing. I guarantee it. All right, guys. 
I'll talk to you soon. Trade well. And as always, let's get those pips. Take care, guys.